If you like what you watch, then don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates on The More Show. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new weekly television and radio shows. My next guest is medium Tony Cole. Now, Tony had a rough childhood and drifted for two decades before realizing his true potential. On his 40th birthday, he discovered spirituality and began to share his gifts with others. Tony Cole, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Tony, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you on. It really Thank is. Thank you very much. Um, now, you didn't always believe in the whole psychic phenomena, did you? I mean, you're now a full-time psychic yeah. as such. Yeah. But Tell me about your past a bit. What, what, what well, doubt made you doubt? Well, it, I think it was just my upbringing, really, from being in children. I went through the care system when I was younger. I had six sisters and a brother. We all were in care, every single one of us. And my mother kind of, like, she, she dumped the five young... I was a little bit older than them. Um, she dumped them and, and run off with somebody. And, and my father wasn't bothered. He was a prolific gambler. And it, it was kind of like... Then I, went, I, I graduated to, like, um, through the prison system... And it was kind of like I went through all that. I had to get rid of all that out of my system, I think, before I actually woke up and, and I was mature enough to handle what I've got, I suppose. I think the way that I look at it, I had to be ready. Yeah, ab yeah. absolutely. And was it not your 40th birthday yeah. that something triggered? Now, just, just tell us I, what happened. It was kind of like I have a local cafe where I go to in Middlesbrough and I'd kind of like... I was sat talking to people and stuff just started coming out my mouth, like falling off my tongue. And I thought, what's going on? But I used to keep pigeons. I had a pigeon shed and I was kind of like in my pigeon shed. And all of a sudden, my dad was stood next to me and it kind of like frightened the life out of me. And he'd been dead since like 1987. He'd passed over and he was just stood next to me clear as daylight. I saw him and I kind of like, it freaked me out. He said, don't worry, son, your life's going to get better. Everything's going to be OK. And then it was just over in a flash like that. And I kind of like jumped in the car and went on to my sister's and, and I told her what had happened. And she, you know what I mean? And, and there was a girl in my sister's house and she just had a fight with a boyfriend. He yeah. kicked her out and so she was staying with my sister. And I said to her, um, how come you always have bad relationships? You've had three blokes who beat you up. So she started like getting really weird and she threw a kind of lager at me because she... So she this, this a, was yeah. straight yeah. after you from seeing oh, your dad yeah, and yeah. getting in, Same, the, in the yeah, car? Same, yeah, about five minutes, ten minutes later. Um, but before, nothing? Nothing, no, it just like kind of, it was just weird and I even ended up going to the doctors telling the doctor I had voices in my head, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden I'd bumped, um, one of my friends had said, yeah. do you want to go for a reading? I said, yeah, no problem, we'll go for a reading. So it goes for a reading of another lady um, and she said to me, I've got your dad here. So I said, all right, go on then, you know. She said, Brian, and that was it. That completely freaked me out. And she said, oh, it's telling me you've got the gift. You should be sat here doing me reading. Tell it, oh, I said, well, I don't, you know. But she said, you just had some experiences. I said, I have, yeah, a few days ago. And it kind of like, she said, you need to go to a spiritualist church right, to learn right. to Right, right, and, so, so that, and, and, that, and that's, and that's yeah, what you did. Yeah. Um, so this was the first time you'd seen your dad for a while then, wasn't it, in, 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 the, in this form? Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, I, I suppose having the sort of background you did, uh, your parents never sort of would have, would have supported this, would they, had they, had they been um, alive? I think my father knew about it because his mother was a medium. But he never ever spoke about it, even though my, I remember my, my grandmother when I was younger and me and my two older sisters, she used to sit us on the, on the settee and, and poke the fire and say, look at the pictures and see what you see. And I right, always remember right. that. That stuck in my mind. So, so would you say, though, that uh, you, you've doubted yourself for a while, though? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's kind of like it, when I do audiences now, I always kind of, I, I say to people, look, I explain what I've been through. I tell them the truth. You know what I mean? I don't hide anything. I say, I've done this, I've been to jail. And, I, and it's kind of like, I've let that, all that from the past, I let it stop me for 10 years. And it's only the last, the, like, the last two years now that I've come back into it. And it's kind of like, I'm starting to get my name out there and, and I'm doing good stuff. And I love, I love being in front of people and I love helping people. I love telling people stuff. You know what I mean? It, it, I kind of like, I thrive on it. Yeah. So, uh, would you say though that you, I mean, uh, okay, you're saying that? The, the, are you saying the doubt's gone? Is that what you're saying? Or? Uh, uh, most of it, I think, yeah, because I've tr I've started to turn my life around. My life's start, like, starting to come good now, and I've got away from the past. I've left it all behind. But that's been the the, the hardest part, the most difficult part for me. Is is kind of like 
because of because of what I've been through and, and people who say, oh, you know, but a bum and this, you know, and I, I I carried that with me for a long time, well into my thirties and into my forties, you know what I mean? And like I say, I'm 52 now and I've come out the other end of it and I'm just starting to come to terms now. I think now I've got, I'm going, you know, I'm moving forward now. So it's, yeah. it's been a process. Yeah. Oh, it's been yeah, a process of, 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 of a little, not downing yeah. yourself. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and do you think you've had to sort of forgive your past as well? Definitely, yeah, because I, I, I've done some bad things in my, in my, in my time. You know what I mean? I've done but, but nothing's judging you, though, is it? No, no. But it's I've judged myself. It's me judging me. So you're me. your own worst critic. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And I kind of like, it, I found it hard to get away from that, you know what I mean? I've been very angry, I've hurt people, you know what I mean? And, and, and it was but don't you think all that matters is now? Yeah, definitely, yeah. So, yeah. so if you change your mindset, you, you, you'd sort of change you in, this, in a sense? Definitely, yeah. Well, I have changed me now. You de you, you, you're dead right, because I, each day now, I, 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 you know what I mean? I try to sort of like, I protect myself, I try to protect myself and leave the past behind. But it's, it's like I've had to claw my way out of it. Yeah. I've been into the spiritualism out of it. I've walked away from it. I've stopped it. I've started I, everything. But you're back into and it. And I'm back into you're it. Back I keep getting it drawn and, and back. And yeah, right absolutely. back to where I started. Yeah. yeah. So, so just describe your spiritual gifts then. I mean, what, what are you able to do and how's it, how does it work as far as you're concerned? Um, well, I'm actually clear audience. I have the voice. Um, I got the, the voice from the beginning, from basically the day that I started. And it was just there, and it, and it completely frightened the life out of me. You know what I mean? I didn't. <laughs> it's kind of like weird, and, because the doctor obviously thinks you're schizophrenic. You know what I mean? But when you've got somebody talking to you, you know, and it makes me laugh sometimes because it, it's just there. You know what I mean? And I, I can hear it as clear as day, like like talking to you. And you know. And is it one voice, many voices? Just it used to be many voices. It used to be lot. You know, women's voices, children's voices, kids, whatever. You know, but now it's just one voice. And, and how's the voice? The voice communicates to you. Yeah. So when you're with a client, then the voice gives the information yeah, across. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? You, oh, you can use tarot cards as well. I do. I work mostly psychic stuff now, where as I, I tend to kind of like see what people have been doing or what they've been up to. You know what I mean? It, that's tough. I was very on the spiritual side when I first started because you've got the spiritual side, the but then you've got the psychic side, and I've kind of changed the way that I work. So, so what you know would you mean? say the difference is, though? The difference is, the spiritual side is you get a lot more people coming in, you get the names, first names, last names, how the, how the passed over. I, I, I don't get as much as, uh, of that now as what I used to. That's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like half, half gone. And now it's kind of like I get more of the pictures. I go, into, go off and onto a psychic tangent where I kind of like tell people what they've been doing all right. day. You so, know I mean? so, you know, the, the, you do a lot of the stage work as well, don't you? Yeah, I do, yeah, I do pubs and clubs. P and pubs and clubs. I've been doing lots of charity work. And what's been the reaction to yourself? I mean, how, oh, would, how would you class yourself as a psychic then? <laughs> um, I, I class myself, I, I'm, I'm good at what I do. And I've been getting lots of feedback from people saying that I'm good as well. And it's kind of like lots of people come up to me and say, oh, God, you should be on the telly, yo. And I say, don't be daft, they wouldn't have me on the TV. You know what I mean? But it's like... I don't know, it's just like I've got so many people. Are you, do you think you're yourself when you're on stage? Or yeah. is, there, is there another part of you that comes out? Or? I think there's another part of me that just comes alive. You know what I mean? I just wake up, you know what I mean? I've me dull, normal, old, fat self during the day. And then just, when I get onto, when I get in front of people, I absolutely love it. I get nervous the first five minutes, as you do, until you've got into it and you get, and, and you do, you know, you're up and away. But I, I absolutely love it. I just come alive, I, I love it. I just love being in front of people. Do you, do you find yourself a lot more healed now than, than where you were before? Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely, yeah, because I had a... It, it's, like, difficult because you just, like, you, you, you just scan everything in your brain all the time, constantly. I, I was constantly scanning the past, the things that I'd done wrong, the things that I'd been through and been in, you know, in the different homes. I used to have, like, that as an everyday routine that would come back and haunt me. Yeah. But I've so, kind of, like, left all that behind, or I'm trying to leave it all behind. <laughs> well, you would say now that, uh, um, I suppose, th this is your job in a way, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. But I've realised now, yeah. Yeah, but you say life's a job, though. Yeah, life is a job. B people don't realise you're born into a human life, and, and being human is, is a hard job in itself. You know what I mean? And, and, we, and, and just a normal everyday life is a job, whether you like it or not. You know what I mean? We can all go to work and earn a wage, but it was never supposed to be like that. You know what I mean? That's just, you know, the world and the people who control us. Who would would you way. say you've got much time for the system? No, I absolutely hate the system. I've been through the system. You know, I've been through the prison system. I've been through the care system. 
you know, and, and the care system kind of like also helped half destroy my family as well because they split everybody up in different places. So I have six sisters left alive. My brother's passed over, drank himself to death. And then nobody talks to each other. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because we all got separated. Do you think it's something you can fix on this level now, what, rather than take it over, over I've, there with you? I've been trying to fix it. Most of it's fixed. I've got, there is about four of my sisters who are talking together now with yeah. each other. Yeah. And I've got a sister, one of my sisters has just uh, had a cancer operation. She's ended up with a tumour and she's, they've just took that out. So she's, she's going to pull through, you know what I mean? So, but it's been difficult because just everybody hated each other. You know what I mean? The, only, but the simple reason is we don't know each other. Because we got separated when we at a young age, we didn't get the chance to know each other. So, have you, with your work, have you uh, spoken to this voice, this guy that you, you describe, about what's going on now in the world? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and what do they say? Well, <laughs> I keep getting told that there's a group of people going to come together to kind of like help to change the world, you know what I mean, to make it into a better place for some reason or other. They, you know what I mean? The spirit world's been on about it for 12 years to me. And you know, and I'm just whoever these people are, they're in the world somewhere. It's like a gathering. It's people coming together. It's a higher consciousness. And everywhere you go, people are feeling it and sensing it. People know something's happening, but a lot of people don't know how to put it into words and how to put it together. You know what I mean? Well, what do you think the change is going to be, though? I mean, are we? Well, there's going to be a lot of strife before the change comes. There's going to be a lot of a, a lot of grief in the world. A lot of, a lot of aggression from governments. Uh, putting people down, trying to stop them because of the backlash in the Middle East now. You know what I mean? The, the, this, it's going to happen here. It'll come here as well. It'll come through Europe. It, it will happen. But the thing is, you know, the government will try and stop us as well because they have to keep us in our place. And it's just the way that it is. And we have to come together as a consciousness. If everybody went on strike for a day... Well, so would you say then the work you're doing now is very much in key with, with this change that you're talking about? Oh, yeah, I would think so, yeah, because I've been seeing this change in my head every day. Every day, every... I go Why can't other people see it, do you think? I don't, I don't know whether they've been opened up to it, but a lot of people have been opened up to it. A lot of people are... I've met a lot of people over the last few years. They're kind of like, they're opening up to the spirituality, but some of them get like a TV screen on the night and they don't know what it is what they've been seeing and I've kind of like been explaining to them like what's happening to them and I've come across quite a lot of that everywhere I go. People okay. are asking me questions, uh, you know what I mean, and for some reason or other, I seem to have a few of the answers for them. And what sort of one last word would you want to give to the audience? Well, I, 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 don't doubt yourself what, no matter what you've been through. You can come out the other side. You can come out of the other side, and you can get yourself onto that straight path. It's it, it, it can be difficult, but it can also be easy. And everybody needs that little bit of help. And every if the world had more love in it, it would be a better place. And I didn't have any of that. You know what I mean? And the people who, who I suppose did love me, I kind of like ate them along the way. But then I've come back full circle. You know what I mean? So. And now I, I, I do my best to help everyone, uh, everyone that I possibly can. I have a lot of friends who call me Mystic Meg, Septic Peg, and whatever they want to call me, and I kind of ju just let it go over my head. Well, look, Tony, it's been an absolute honour to have you on. Thank you so much for joining thank, us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Cheers. For more information on any of my guests on today's show, visit my website, themoreshow.co.uk. And remember, you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So until next time, thanks for watching. Visit themoreshow.co.uk forward slash shop to purchase products and services from your favourite past guests. If you're new to this site, you can also catch up on the previous television and radio shows through YouTube and the More Show website.